Shut up, Austin. Shut up. Scott Elmore, girls inside the draw circle. St. John's in the dark uniforms, the black, the Hockaday Daisies in the white with the green numbers. Hockaday takes possession. Number 16, Anna Gum, brings it up the left side of the field. They're gonna work the ball back to X behind the cage. Still working the ball back to X number two, Alex Barron. Brings it up top. She looks like she wants to go to goal. You see the footwork, there it is. There's the shot, nice save by the Maverick goalie. And Maverick's ball up the right side of the field. A Little bit of defensive pressure. Okay. Looks to me like she may have stepped out of bounds there. That gets precarious when you got the pressure from the defender. Hockaday brings the ball back up the field. Oh 
number 8, Taylor Hua, and now number 11, Landry Grover. Still working the ball around. Doesn't look like they've decided to call the play just wet yet. That will happen in time. Shot another nice save. Crease violation. Crease violation. Nice pass up the left side of the field for the Mavericks. Working the ball up to number nine. Alexa Christensen. Nice save. Great save by the Hawkeye goalie. Quick release out of the crease. Great job on the clear. A lot of foul miles here at PK. Goes to goal. Lower left misses. Hockaday ball on the inbound. Shot by number 28. going to stay down at X, work the ball. Looks like she's going to goal. You see the footwork there. Nice goal right there. Number two, Grace Holderman. Great goal. You saw the footwork coming early. You tend to see that uh, when they work the ball back from X, but an a excellent job of Hockaday bringing the ball up the field quickly, getting the goal. It's a good try by the uh, Mavericks goalie. He's just too good of a shot at this point. So for those that aren't in Houston, it's 87 degrees, partly cloudy. It is hot. Um, believe me, it's hot. When those clouds uh, disappear, uh, it, it feels a lot hotter. We saw that in the last game. We saw that uh, Episcopal Dallas beat Kincaid 19-10. to And towards the end of the game, you could see the players uh, were losing energy in the heat after playing all day. Another draw control, Hockaday Daisies, number 11, Landry Grover brings the ball up, brings it top center as they position themselves across the restraining line in the attack zone. Going to work the ball around the side, try to maybe get it to X again. So it looks like they're working the ball from X, sending cutters, setting picks but very patient. They're not forcing any balls up the middle at the moment. Did you see that call? No, penalty on play sends uh, Hockaday's Grace Coverman to the dot. She's going to attack the goal. Ooh, that was open. The pass was just a little bit late. That was open early. Ball back to the goalie for the clear. Great job clearing so far. Getting the ball away from the goalie and up the field. Great job by the goalie. Great job, and she is fast. She got the ball up. Bit of a mistake there. The goal is wide open, and it's launched, and it's a goal. Did you get the number on that, Mike? Yeah, so what you'll see is when the goalie comes out, that's the risk. A lot of coaches, uh, they encourage their goalies to be aggressive. Uh, you run the risk of that when you're out of goal by up at the 30-yard line or so, and you lose control, they can they can launch it from there. That's what you saw. St. John's ties it up one-to-one. -one. 20 minutes and 53 seconds left in the first half. I think that was number eight, Sloan Davidson, for St. John's. One-to-one. -one. So far, Hockaday has done a great job possessing the ball. 
Looks like the St. John's Mavericks got a break there to tie it up. Um, and the draw control so far have gone both to Hockaday. Let's see what develops here. Number 15, DJ Kwan, taking the uh, draw for Hockaday. With 20.53 to go in the first half, 1-1. One, one. Another draw control by Hockaday. That's the third time they've placed the ball up on the far side of the field from us, and they've gained control each time. They work it up. They're going to work it around the sides again. Working it back to X. Looks like St. John's wants to defend X a little tighter there and not let the ball get past. Looks like she's going to goal. See the footwork. Great move, great spin. Great maneuver and inside the goal just lost possession. And what they call there? They may have called a crease violation. I'm not sure what they call, but we'll give it St. John's ball. So Hockaday will defend the goalie on the clear. Goalie has 10 seconds to get herself out of the goalie circle. Decent pass there, caught. Looks like a trip. Redirect coming back up the top side of the field. This is where there's that pressure. It's hard to stay in bounds under that pressure. Ball down the field. The goalie out of the cage. She apparently likes to play an aggressive game. Feeds the ball back into inside the crease for herself. That is legal in girls lacrosse. Quite a cannon. Nice throw, just a little too high. St. John's will get that back. Mike, did you see the goalie covering wide? I did. It's pretty impressive that she's that far out of the crease, especially this early in the game. Yeah, so that seems to be their strategy. I haven't seen Hockaday play this year, but they've seen they do let, let the goalie run free. St. John's with possession. Push on Hockaday. Ball back to St. John's. They're going to work it up top. Up on top of the 12 meter arc. They're going to work it back to X. 18 14 to go, first half. 1 1 tie. St. John's works it around the perimeter. Keeping themselves pretty high off the 12. Doesn't look like they're forcing anything, but they're going to run something there. There's the weave. That's a great play. You saw the weave set up, and that is... Number nine, Alexa Christensen. Yeah, that was very well well executed there. You saw them start the setup. It happened faster than I had expected. Sometimes the weave takes two or three passes, but uh, they executed that very well. They went ahead, scored the goal, and now they are up 2-1, to 17.58 to go in first half. So that looks like the, 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 the first possession that St. John's worked it around and taking their time and, and run a play. It seems like that's been Hockaday so far, and that was St. John's first run at that. Yeah, St. John's has had a lot of opportunity with the ball here so far. In girls lacrosse, it's very important to win the draw, and right now, draw control solidly uh, being taken by uh, Hockaday here. Number 15 from Hockaday, Min Jae Kwon, again, taking the draw here. Yeah, it looks like she's very good at the self-draw up to the top of the field. Uh, to either her or maybe one of her own players, but so far it's gone their way. Looks to be number 28, Harper Ree from St. John's taking the draw. Bit of a chess match on the draw circle for position. Same placement, four for four. NJ Kwon bringing the ball up the field. 
They're going to work it back to X once again. Looks like St. John's is going to defend up there. You don't always go back and defend there. Sometimes they do. And they're going to try to feed from X. Nice cut inside the crease. That's a great play right there inside the defender. Number two, great coverman. Great play right there. Not a lot you can do. She had a one-on-one. -on -one. She made the fake to the to the top side of the field, came in low, and beat the goalie. Tough goal to defend against right there. So we have 17.34 to go in the first 2-2. Two -two. So the draw control is interesting. It's a 2-2 two -two game, but Hockaday's controlled all four draws. They've also placed it in almost the exact same spot every time. So do you think St. John's will take an expect that on this draw here? You you would think, and, and sometimes sometimes that works. You place you place your players over there and it works, but if the girl on draw is good, she just sent it someplace else, and that might be what we're seeing. Uh, she's just had that open field over there to, to place it to herself. Let's see what St. John's comes with here to counter that. Number 15, Minjay Kwan from Hockaday coming to take the draw. We have a new girl on the draw here for St. John's. St. John's trying a couple different girls here, seeing who matches up best with uh, Minjay from Hockaday. Let's go, Minjay! 2 2. First half. There it is again. Almost the exact same place. Yep, so St. John's are going to need to adjust that. You, you can't hang in there with a team like Hockaday if you're not going to if you're not going to start getting some of the draws. She goes to goal here. Great defense. A great play def on the, by the defensive player slapping that away. And they're going to give that to St. John's and Hockaday fans are not happy about that. Did you see that, Mike? I did. I thought the ball went out before. I think that's a good call. Call by Scott Elmore, Houston referee. In the back, Hockaday. Looks like a turnover here. Hockaday ball. See how quickly they get it up the field. Ball picked up by number four for Hockaday, Caroline Warlick. Open player by the goal. I don't think she saw her as open as she was. Aggressive defense by St. John's. Hockaday's going to work it back up top, high off the 12. They're going to let things settle in. Also called the settled offense within girls lacrosse. And now they might run a play off of that. See girls cutting, setting picks down low near the crease. Setting up a play, bottom left of the goal. Attacking top left. Shot, number 28. Octay will maintain possession ball. Number two, Grace Hummerman brings it in. That was an impressive shot, the low roller. You're seeing a lot more of that at the high school level. You see girls that watch the Division I games, they get that low roller, that almost underhand shot. Great shot there, just wide of the goal. Very good defense there. St. John's pushing her back outside the 12. Hockaday will work it. There go the feet. Looks like she's going to goal. And there it is. That's the shot I was referring to, the low roller. Excellent footwork, excellent stick skills. Very hard to defend as a defender or a goalie. Number nine, Sunny Wang from Hockaday. Brings the yes, goal to brings the score to three to two. Hockaday, 15-42 left in the first half. Do we have her listed here as a freshman? We do have her listed as a freshman. That's an impressive move with the move to goal, beat the defender, and get it in under the goalie stick. You know, that was a great move by a freshman. One of the things I'm impressed about with this Hockaday team is how young this team are. There's a large number of freshmen on this team here. For this team to have done as well as they have this year, only one loss to a team from Virginia with this many freshmen on the roster. That's really impressive. I count, I count about eight, and that's a lot on a varsity roster for the number one ranked team in Texas. That means a, a pretty bright future for the Hockaday program. For St. John's, we have number 31, Lexi Lukens taking draw. Hockaday sticking with number uh, 15, Minjay Kwan. So, so there's your positioning, Mike. So, so St. John's has adjusted to it. Let's see how Hockaday adjusts to the St. John's adjustment. Oh, uh, great there move. It is. Minjay takes it straight back away from the hot St. John's players. Yeah, she is a senior Dartmouth commit, and now we see why. She's, she's controlled every draw, I think all but one to herself, and she just put that right where she needed it. That said, on the turnover, St. John's gets the ball, but they're struggling to bring it up the field. Looking for the redirect. Bring it towards the bottom of your screen, middle of the screen. Oh, threw that ball into tight coverage there. 
Yeah, St. John's player got hit in the face with the lacrosse ball. The turnover, there it is again. Hockaday ball, they're going to slow it down into a settled offense, keep it high off the 12. Round ball by number nine, Sonny Wong, the freshman. Going to goal. That was a great shot. We have line of sight on that shot right behind her up in the boot. That was incredible stick work to level up, go perpendicular over, straight over the shoulder into the left corner. Outstanding shot, and that puts the score 4-2 for the Hockaday Daisies. 14.56 to go in the first half. What number did you have on that score? Did you see that? Number 28. Number 15, Minjay Kwan walking up to draw a circle, setting up the midfielders where she wants them. Let's see how St. John's responds to this. St. John's number 31 stepping up for the draw. St. John's going to split their midfielders here. One on the top where uh, Minjay's been drawing the ball to, one on the bottom where she put the last ball. A bit of a bit of a defensive, very defensive there, but they're handing a lot of real estate to Hockaday if she can place it anywhere other than, there it is again. And you see the stick change, so the draw, they take the draw with this, a stick that's designed specifically for the draw. You see that she lags back and exchanges that for the, for the stick that she prefers, prefers to use for normal lacrosse. Round ball again by number nine, Sunny Wang. Work the ball towards the side, they're going to go high up off the 12, settle in. Settled offense. They might be setting up some cutting down below and some picks, but they are. They look, yeah, it looks like they set up just to the top side of that crease, and they cut and they pick from there. That eight or nine. Eight. Taylor Hewell with the goal. Very impressive. Another shot with the stick directly over her head. So not on an angle, not a sidearm shot but a shot from over the head where it's, you can place the ball but you don't get much power and she finds the power to put it past the St. John's goalie. We are 5-2 Hockaday Daisies, 14-10 to go, first half. So what we're seeing for their, for their play, uh, looks like they like to stack some girls down by the crease when they have the settled offense and they just pick, set some picks and cut, but we, what we saw again is that they, they leave the option up top for the girl to go to goal herself. And that's worked the past few uh, tries for Hockaday here. They're getting the uh, cutters coming through from the bottom. Uh, cutters are not open. St. John's doing a great job defending the cutters, and so the girl just takes it herself one-on-one. -on -one. Yep, so here comes the chess match on the draw circle. Very strategic. It's worked for Hockaday every time so far. Let's see if St. John's can finally get something on the draw, bring the ball back down to their attack zone. We have number 11 for St. John's, Anna Kate Black taking the draw. False start there. We don't know who he's going to call it on. Looks like a neutral call. Restart. So in girls lacrosse, it's a draw and a draw circle. Different from the boys game, which is the face-off, which you can see the black lines on the field for the boys face-off. The blue lines are the girls lines for girls lacrosse today at Kincaid. Great job there. Yeah. St. John's has to be happy with that. They get a in the sphere call, so they keep the ball. St. John's ball, finally they get the ball off the draw. Let's see if they can get up, up into the attack zone across the 30-yard line. So I'm not sure what I saw in the draw different there. She was able to get the ball in the air. Uh, looks like the other ones that Hockaday's control, they get the low line drive going their direction. She popped that one up, was able to get it into her stick and eventually bring it into the attack zone. I think as much as anything else, she was able to control the draw. She's able to put it uh, not where the Hockaday player wanted it to go. Hockaday has been doing a great job getting the draw to go exactly where they wanted to. Yeah, they surgical strikes and great job by St. John. So now they control it. They're in no rush. Settle off. Here comes the weave. We saw that on the goal earlier. Exact same play. Nice shot there, not as much power. She took a shove inside the eight. Uh, she didn't get the power that she wanted, but that's the same goal they scored with early. So Hockaday is probably going to see that too and maybe start to address the weave. 
Ball for unbounds by number four, Grace Emerson. Number 10, Mia Carley. Great hustle there. That's the stuff you love to see as a coach when somebody forces themselves into the situation and, and makes a steal for the defense, and she'll probably try to get the ball to the goalie here. Very common in girls lacrosse. Feed the ball back to the goalie, especially with the cannon that this goalie has. Up the field again. She's throwing it over her own players' heads. Past the 40, Hockaday ball into the attack zone. Across the 30. She's going to go in left-handed. Switch to the right, so she draws the shooting space violation. And she'll get a free position. Number nine, Sunny Wang. St. John's takes up the adjacent hash marks on the eight. She drives in. Great save. Now, that was great stick work going in. A lot of maneuvering with the stick to keep the defenders away from her. She got a decent shot off, but not fast enough to get it past the St. John's goalie. They work the clear. They're going to take it up the field, out of the attack zone. Maybe not. There they go. Worked the ball up high off the 12. Settled offense. Remember that weave. Remember number nine in the weave. Alexa Christensen is the number nine player they like to send in from the top, from the bottom of our screen. They give it to her right hand to work into the eight and shoot. Christensen's wide open. Great pass. She's going to work it to the middle. Great feed. They're going to try to force it inside the eight. Tough territory. What a shot. Close quarters. That's a tough neighborhood inside the eight. A lot of clutter, a lot of people. Not very friendly in there. She got the stick control, put it in the goal. And that brings it to 5-3. And Kate Daisy's lead, 11-10 to go in the first. Looks like some huddles here for, the, for each team. Talk it over. Uh, not an official timeout as much as the players just talking over. It is a little hot out, 87 degrees. The clouds are keeping it cool enough, but I can assure you that uh, in the black uniforms, it's a hot day down there. Mike, we walked around that field before the game started here, and it was warm down on that turf down here. It's 85 degrees, but it feels like 90 out there, and it's probably even warmer than that on that turf. Yeah, those that have walked barefoot on hot Texas turf, you know that it's it's uh, it's a lot hotter than you think. It's it's a beautiful field, beautiful stadium, but that is hot with the heat coming off the artificial turf. So we'll go back to the draw. Let's see if St. John's can take control one more time here. Anna Kate Black, number 11 for St. John's, taking the draw again. Hockaday is stuck with Minjay Kwan. She's done fantastic so far this game. Senior Dartmouth commit. Yep, a little bit of positioning there. It's it's an interesting. It, it's a lot of details in there. It's not just you, you go and you, you take the draw. They are they want to get in a very very precise position, uh, footwork, stick work, hand work, and the draw. And there it is again. And it looks like Hockaday might self draw. She does. She works it up the top side of the field. Looks like she's going to goal. You saw the footwork. Great stick work. Great shot. Great save. St. John's goalie. Shot by number two, Grace Hufferman. Grace up, reoffending now, chasing the ball down. It gets tough on that sideline. They want to shove you out. They have to do so without getting the call. St. John's takes it in the attack zone past the 30-yard line. Looks like they want to bring it back up top of the 12. Settled offense. Take their time, work it around, bring it back to X. Working around, looks like Hockaday is going to get a little aggressive. You see both players went out, look behind X. The defense is going to play aggressive on St. John's. She's coming all the way out off the 12. That can be a hit or miss proposition. If you get the ball back, it's great, but if you get beat, then there's not a lot to stop the player from going all the way to goal. Takes it back to X. Aggressive defense by Hockaday. They're, they're definitely not, there it is, there's the steal. Hockaday ball. Up the bottom side of the field. Back to the goalie. Stolen by number 26, Riley DeMonte. 
you've got to think Molly Ford has a lot of confidence in this goalie to give her the, the free run to take that ball all the way up the field every chance she gets. She's done a great job other than that one mistake. Driving to goal. That's great lacrosse right there. That is outstanding lacrosse. Goes to goal, sees the girl open, passes it. Bottom shelf shot. Great, great job, Hockaday. Number nine, Sunny Wang, fed it to number two, Grace Hoverman. Grace is a junior committed to play lacrosse at Columbia. So 6-3, Hockaday, 9.28 to go, first half. That play there, if you spend any time watching uh, either on YouTube or, or live, the, the Division One lacrosse, that's the level of lacrosse you see there. The girl breaks free, the defender breaks towards the girl with the ball, and the, uh, the assist is, is, is wide open, and then the low roller into the goal, outstanding lacrosse by Hockaday. Mike, last time when they set up for the draw, you had all four middies on the top of the circle there all next to each other, and then Jay went the other way. How do you think they're going to line up this time? Don't know. They, they have. It, it's a chess game. And they, changing it up every time. Yeah, it, it's a chess game, and, and I think Hockaday, I think the way they control it, it, it's tough to defend because she has the ability to place the ball uh, wherever she wants to, which means away from the two St. John's midfielders. Uh, and now they're both lining up on the uh, attack side. Uh, and leaving the other side of the draw circle open. I'll tell you, Mike, I don't like this. I, I like at least one of the midfielders up on the defensive side there, just in case the ball goes the other way, just like that. There it is, and she's done that before. Um, I was thinking the same thing, so th I think they're going to have to amend that a little bit. So we have Hockaday ball. Looks like they're uh, bringing it back to X. They want to work it from there. So they're going to run that. They're going to run some feeds. Great job there. Working the ball again, left hand, right hand. Bring it up to the side, top of the field. Maybe work it back up to the top of the 12. Looks like a settled offense. Does, doesn't seem like Hockaday's in much of a rush. They're up by a few goals here in the first half. Doesn't seem like they need to force anything. Back up to the top of the 12, high off the 12. A lot of green in there, not a lot of clutter. She might want to go to goal. She's showing the footwork. Usually when you see the footwork, they go to goal. There's the footwork, she goes left. Oh, she had the assist. Penalty on Hockaday in the steer mic that we saw there. So I missed the play here. I'm actually watching how St. John's is face guarding number 15 here, Minjay uh, Kwan. Yeah, so she's had a great game. Maybe they're trying to take her out of it, but when you face guard, you tend to leave yourself open other areas. Great save by the St. John's goalie on the free position shot. Nice speed here. This is, this is impressive speed all the way up the field. A lot of green for St. John's and the push. St. John's keeps possession. Number nine, Alexa Christensen. That's something that you see, again, back to the D1 reference. When those girls come up the field, they, they sprint. There's no jogging. There's no 90% speed. They are 100% as fast as they can get the ball up the field. St. John's going to work the ball again up on top of the 12. They have two defenders on her. She took the shot. Not a lot of force on the shot, but here's the cannon from, <laughs> from the goalie launching it. Uh, didn't complete it, and St. John's might keep possession if they can keep this ball in bounds, and they can't. Hockaday ball. Mike, it's interesting that St. John's is not defending the attack player up on the uh, restraining line there. So that uh, outlet pass from the goalie yep. to that top attack is going to be open every time. Yep. Yeah, that ha that not only helps the clear bringing the ball up the field, that helps you get up the field fast. So Hockaday possession. Here's the footwork. I think she might want to go to goal. She's going to be patient here. Bring it back up to the high 12, top side of the 12. Hakadai in no rush, and there is no shot clock in girls' high school lacrosse. There is one at the collegiate level. 
so they can take their time they have the lead so no rush for Hockaday they'll be patient and look for the shot that they that they like not the one that they think they have to have setting up a play at the top of the eight driving from X passing to the top there's the footwork there's the there it is that's a great shot she goes left she drives goes left shoots left oh that's impressive across and a fast shot I think the St. John's goalies made some impressive saves. I don't think there was too much she sh could have done there that brings us to 7-3 Hockaday Daisies 547 to go in the first So still a hot day. I have n neither team has used one of their timeouts in girls high school lacrosse. You get two timeouts per game. Uh, I haven't seen either team call one yet, but the teams do like to conference themselves on the field, talk it over. On the defensive side, St. John's deciding what they can do to maybe uh, better stop the attack that uh, the Hockaday Daisies have brought to the game. You know, I was thinking the same thing, that now would be a great time for St. John's to call a timeout. Let's get together and discuss how to defend this and, here. And there it is, I think. So another part to that, is if you, if you want to get your players more rest, you, you wait a little bit after the goal. You don't pull out right after the goal. And I think that's what St. John's might have done here. Take a little more time to think it over. Let the players kind of slowly walk back to the draw circle and then call the timeout. So it will be timeout. Again, it's Hockaday Daisies 7, St. John's Mavericks 3, and it's 5.47 to go in the first. Become a Vibe Insider today. Access breaking news in high school sports. Enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos, documentaries on programs in your area. It's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan. If you go for the yearly plan, it rounds out to just $1.99 a month. It costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe news throughout the entire year subscribe today what are you waiting for it's less than a cup of coffee a month become a vibe insider $2.99 a month $23.99 for the whole year hey it's vibe we will see you at the games Welcome back to the SBC Girls Lacrosse Championship game, coverage by Vite Media. 5.47 to go in the first half. Hockaday Daisies winning 7-3 over the St. John's Mavericks. We are still in a timeout here. It's a warm day here. Let these uh, girls get some water here. Refresh. St. John's wants to get together, huddle up, talk about how they're going to defend the draw here. Uh, Hockaday has been almost unbeatable on the draw here. I think uh, St. John's has only won one draw here so far. Yeah, and it's it's um it's a very precise process to draw. It might look like two girls trying to slug it out inside the draw circle. It, it's a lot more technical than that. And you have draw specialists. Um, most of the time, though, your draw specialist is going to be one of your better players, if if not your best player. It's very common, but on occasion, there are girls that uh, will just take the draw, and they'll still be part of the part of the 11 players on the field uh, but they are specifically allocated that that draw position on the open uh, possession is very important and we've seen that St. John's hung in there for a little bit uh, without getting possession looks like Hockaday in addition to owning the draw um, it's, it's way too early to suggest that they're pulling away as much as say that they are showing themselves to be consistent when they do get the ball and their ability to score and the great thing, when Hockaday gets the ball, they've actually been very patient on defense. They've set up several plays, tried to run different plays. At the end of the day, they're just a very athletic team. They've been able to uh, drive from both the top and from X and uh, score. Yep, so Hockaday comes into the game 16-1 and record. As Mike mentioned, they're only loss and out-of-state loss uh, their power ranking number 86.47 the number one ranked girls team in division one Texas st. John's comes in with a 14 and 3 record a 79.24 power rating within laxnumbers.com they are the ninth ranked team within Texas girls lacrosse 
at the Division One level. Worth noting is this is the SPC uh, championship game. The SPC is a conference to itself. Within Texas, there is also uh, the Texas-wide game, which includes all the schools. So this is the SPC championship today at Kincaid uh, in the Houston area. Next weekend is the final four for the statewide competition, and both of these teams will be there as well. You will have Hockaday, St. John's, Westlake, and Flower Mound in the final four next weekend for the girls Texas State Championship. So there we go back to what what you pointed out Mike and the draw circle. They're not going to leave that defensive draw position open. So they've, they've assigned a midfielder there to prevent Hockaday from a self draw going right to goal. Hockaday moving, repositioning one of their midfielders to the attack side of the uh, draw circle. Yeah, we saw a lot of open stick checks. We finally got one called. But again, Mike, what we saw, when if St. John's can get that ball in the air, uh, they're good. They, they have a fair chance, if not a strong chance, of getting the ball. Uh, when they prevent Hockaday from placing that draw exactly where she wants to place it. I think that's going to have to be their strategy going forward. Let's just out-muscle them. Let's get the ball up in the air where it's a 50-50 ball and everybody can jump for it. Not let this Hockaday uh, draw specialist take and put it where she wants it. St. John's works the ball back to X, brings it back up high off the 12. Top center off the 12. Looks like Hockaday is going to play an aggressive defense. That's what I'm seeing so far. They're not afraid to come out and challenge somebody high off the 12. Looks like a shooting space violation. I think that was shooting space in girls lacrosse. You're not allowed to freely run in front of somebody who's about to shoot unless you are already playing against her, unless you're covering her. Free position from the 8 meter. Top of the 8, drives in. No goal. And Hockaday ball. And she'll probably try to reach this to the goalie. Goalie ball. And the clear is in place. They'll take it out of the defensive zone to the midfield zone towards the draw circle. Might be a turnover on the pass there. Great job by St. John's getting that ball back. Decent speed. Number nine, Alexa Christensen with the ground ball running down the field. Great speed. So so that looks like maybe her third goal, Mike, and it's from the same spot. If she talk, if she starts from the bottom of where we are and just works herself diagonally towards that goal, she's got a great right arm shot. They're saying there was a whistle blown. And the parents are going to tell us exactly what they think of that call. We are still 7-3, 3.24 to go in the first half. I don't know that they've given St. John's that goal yet. It looks like they're going to. So that should be 7-4. Give them the goal. There it is, 7-4, Hockaday Daisies, 319. Back to the draw. This has pretty much been a one-sided affair, and it is, again, a self-draw, quick release, ball up the field, outstanding. You can see her switch sticks. There's a great feed. Comes in, great shot. Great shot. Number six, May playing against number nine, Sunny Wang. I'm seeing, are they, are, I'm showing them both as freshmen, Mike. They are both freshmen. That was impressive. Again, that's what, that's the kind of execution that you see at the collegiate level. Bringing the ball in a very powerful shot. The St. John's goalie's done a good job, but if you shoot that ball fast enough in the right spot, there's not much you can do to prevent it. And Hockaday does that again to go up 8-4, 3-0-9 left in the first half. Hockaday just showing how quickly they can score here. And that is very impressive stick skills there. It's very hard to make that pass with just the right amount of touch on it to get it to the uh, player there when you're running at a full sprint there. Thank you so much, yeah. 
So this is the draw. It just seems that Hockaday can can do it. Place that ball wherever she wants to. Um, if you're St. John's, you can try different things, but so far they haven't worked unless St. John's can pop the ball up into the air. So open stick check, is that what you saw, Mike? Yes, open stick check. Interestingly, they let one of the defenders take the ball. Usually one of the midfielders has to take that ball. Yeah, so they moved fast off that whistle, picked up the ball, got it downfield. Aggressive defense by St. John's. The parents don't like that aggressive defense for Hockaday. Looks like she might go to goal. She goes in. Another great weave. Impressive play there. No goal, no goal. Three violation. Did she step in the crease herself? Or another player? I believe she finished uh, her stick, uh, finished in the crease there. Yep, so the great goal, that was impressive. One for the highlight reel, except it doesn't count. So she has 10 seconds to clear herself from the crease. Doesn't seem to be much of a hurry here. She's gonna wait for the 10 second count and then step out. Takes off running. This is where it gets precarious. If you give the ball over, we saw what happened earlier in the game when St. John scored on such a play. She really needs somebody to get open. Decent pass. Okay, looks like St. John's can get the ball up the field. A little bit of a push. They will play on. 156 to play. Just outside the attack zone for St. John's. Above the 30. Ball's inside the 30. <coughs> number 11, Anna K. Black has the ball at the top. Passes it to number 9, Alexa Christensen. Pass it back to 16. Hockaday going to come out, play aggressive defense here. Yeah, Hockaday is going to stay with the aggressive defense. I don't know that you would play for one shot here, but if you want to, I don't think Hockaday is going to let you. There it is, ball down inside the eight. Hockaday ball. That's the aggressive defense. So I haven't seen Hockaday play this year. I don't know if that's their normal style or they saw something uh, that they wanted to bring specific to St. John's. Another great save by the St. John's goalie. Powerful shot, better save. Another shot, pocket eight, number nine, Sunny Wang. So we're down to 50 seconds left. Shouldn't they be stopping that clock? St. John's has the ball. Bring it up top side of the field. Work it top side of the field. Looks like she's going to make the ball go to X. She's going to roll the crease. Great defensive stop there and the push. You are 20 seconds. Now's the time to make the move if you're St. John's. She's going to force it in there. That was outstanding the cross, but she had to get the ball. She was down to 16 seconds. Force it inside the eight and a goal. Number nine again, Alexa Christensen for St. John's. Very important goal there, 8-5. A little bit of momentum maybe going into the half. They've really struggled on the draw. That can get discouraging, uh, but St. John's is very much in this game and very much willing to fight down to the last few seconds of the first half. Second half will be pretty interesting here, Mike. Uh, St. John's is a very uh, athletic school. They actually have four different players that are committed to play college uh, field hockey. Yeah, we talked to the coach before the game, and we were very impressed uh, with the athleticism where you have girls playing this level of high school lacrosse, and, the and it turns out that four of them are also uh, outstanding field hockey players already committed to playing college. 8-5, 14 seconds left. You don't expect much within 14 seconds, but with the Hockaday draw skills, you can't rule anything out right now. Hockaday ball, they're going to move it fast. 10 seconds, she's going to go to goal, at least try to get a call. Timeout, Hockaday. That's a tough call there. Uh, I, I think Molly, Molly Ford, head coach of the Hockaday Daisies, um, trying to strategize with eight seconds left. So Hockaday will maintain possession and she's going to try to in put, put in some sort of play that can score with eight seconds. Uh, with the level of skill and, and stick ability that we've seen from Hockaday, you can't rule out that they can take this one to goal. 
That's a tough decision there, Mike. Uh, warm day, 10 seconds left, not a lot of time to work with here, 8-5. 10 seconds left, you think you want to try for a goal, or would you just take your two uh, timeouts into the second half, give yourself an opportunity to take a break in the second that, half? That's a, that's a good point. I, di I didn't think about saving the timeout. I'm, I'm okay with the call, but there's definitely a strategy to uh, keeping your timeout for the second half. So in this respect, we, have, we will have St. John's and Hockaday both using one of their two timeouts in the first half, leaving them one each in the second half. I think when it comes to strategy, it's hard to argue with Molly Ford Hutchinson out of Hockaday. Yeah, very impressive uh, track record since she's taken over there, and uh, I think we've seen that on the field today in terms of what uh, what her draw specialist has done and the stick work that we've seen inside the eight. Uh, that said, on the, on the St. John side, they they will come up with some bursts of energy and, and some in incredibly stick work equal to Hockaday, but I, I, they haven't been consistent that way. They've run the weave effectively. They've had a few good goals, but on the uh, in terms of consistent play. It seems that, that Hockaday has, has maintained the ball possession and run the, uh, the consistent plays back from X and even from the top of the 12. I think one of the things St. John's going to have to figure out during halftime here is just exactly what they can do to uh, better defend the draw here. St. John's wants to have a, any chance of coming back here. They're going to have to do a better job with the draw control in the second half. Yeah, I would say that the draw control is the highest priority and, and sometimes you hate to say there's nothing you can do, and s but sometimes there's not much you can do. Uh, but then they're going to also, at, at halftime, they're going to have to talk about uh, how to handle the, the, the Hockaday defense. They've shown themselves to be very aggressive. They've had a few good steals. Uh, I wouldn't say that St. John's has played a sloppy game at all uh, down in the attack zone, but I think Hockaday is just positioning themselves right place, right time to intercept those passes, and that gets back to the possession uh, where if you control the draw and you're making the steals on defense, you're going to have the ball a lot more, and it's really going to be hard for St. John's to come back unless they can solve those two items items. Referees calling players back to the field here. Looks like we have how many referees? Is there three or four today? Four. Uh, normally what do we have two in a game? In a normal season game you'd have two. I think as we get here into uh, postseason play we think we have four including one at the uh, table. So just make sure the clock's running left, right as well as the four. Oh, so, so they're running the clock from the from the tent. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Here we go. Cowbell Nation. Hockaday with the cowbell. Cowbells out. Eight five. Hockaday. Ten seconds to go. They will start the play up top. Here's the play from the top of the twelve. Great save. Great save. Great play. Shot by number fifteen. Minje Kwan from Hockaday. That'll so, take us to halftime. And and that that tells you a lot. They drew up a play and they gave it back to her. Uh, that's a lot of confidence in, in, in her to uh, not only be taking the draw, but take the feed on an important goal with, with just a couple of seconds left in the half. And they've been face guarding her most of the first half here. They must have taken that timeout to draw a play to get her out of that face guard. Yes, yeah, so we are, it's a seven minute half. Uh, half times in girls lacrosse run from five to ten minutes usually it's what the coaches agree on at the SPC championship there might be a, a set time but not a lot of time you get you get seven minutes to, to try to fix what you need to fix you get seven minutes to if you're at St. John's to uh, work on how we're going to position ourselves for the draw and how we're going to handle their aggressive defense and if you're Hockaday you decide do you do you keep the, the foot on the gas pedal and and keep bringing the ball down the field or do you at what point do you can do you slow down or do you not consider slowing down Hockaday Daisies lead eight to five over the St. John's Ma Mavericks we're at halftime here at uh, Siegel Field at Kincaid with that we'll go to halftime become a Vibe Insider today access breaking news in high school sports enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos documentaries on programs in your area it's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan if you go for the yearly plan it rounds out to just $1.99 a month it costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe news throughout the entire year subscribe today what are you waiting for it's less than a cup of coffee a month become a vibe insider $2.99 a month $23.99 for the whole year hey it's vibe we will see you at the games
And welcome back to beautiful Barnhart Stadium, Siegel Field at Kincaid School here in Houston here. Warm day here. It's starting to get warm. We'll have to see if the uh, temperature plays more of a factor here in the second half, uh, Mike. Uh, referees fixing to call the uh, girls back onto the field here. Both of the teams huddled up one last time as we get ready to start the second half here. St. John's trails Hockaday 5-8. to eight. Yeah, so with the with the venue being Kincaid in the memorial section of Houston, so this is um, not too far from the St. John's campus, a bit of a home game for them. Hockaday coming down from the Dallas area. Uh, you wouldn't know that from the enthusiasm and, as I mentioned before, the cowbells brought by the Hockaday fans. So a lot of energy on both sides, and uh, that's a good thing in this heat. We do see some umbrellas in the stand keeping the heat off, but as Mike mentioned, 87 degrees, partly cloudy. It does get hot on the turf. So we'll see the teams take the field again. Uh, we mentioned what needs to be addressed. I think St. John's needs to try something on the draw. Uh, it's not so easy to diagnose. It, it's not something you point to and say we need to change this. But if they can maybe get some more draw and they can also um, find a way to uh, handle the aggressiveness of that Hockaday defense, St. John's has shown the ability. They're not afraid to come back here. They're going to keep fighting. I wouldn't count St. John's out just yet, Mike. They are a very uh, athletic team. We'll see just how important that is here in the second half. So they switch sides, as is the custom in most all sports. You will see the St. John's goalie to the left of us, the left of your screen, and the Hockaday goalie to the right. And we'll have the draw again. We'll see if St. John's can get this ball in the air and see if they can take possession. Teams line up with midfielders on each side of the circle here, top and bottom. Uh, nobody really off to the sides here. I wonder if we bring right to the side here. So you often see that when you change sides at the half, they get the draw. They're a little confused which way to go. They fix it quickly. However, St. John's does get the ball back on a turnover. They will work the ball up the field, out of the mid zone, into the attack zone. Passing the ball down, working the ball to the sides. Looks like she will take it down to X. So you see that defense. They have someone on here and they have some another defender. They're playing, they're basically playing two defenders on the ball. They will bring out, see that right there. You can see that the number 22 came out and he had the defender behind her. So that's a bit of the zone backer. That's what that's it looks what like to exactly. me. Exactly. I was wondering if it was a zone backer with the two people on the ball at all times. So what that means is they'll play a zone, uh, but they will put one a point pressure on the ball. They'll put a player behind her as a backup, but that just means that you have one fewer defender for all the other players on the attack. There is a girl that's going to be open. It's going to be up to uh, St. John's here to find that girl. So you saw the yellow flag there. Stick in the spear. Stick in the spear. She took it into the eight. Got a penalty. Now, if she takes that shot, then the shot is what it is. There is no penalty. And if she makes the shot, it's a goal. If she misses, they play it. Uh, if she takes the ball outside the eight, then she gets the free position, which is what she has now. So it looks like she got her stick hit, and the ball still went in. Yeah, she shook her hand at the end there. I wonder if she uh, took it off the hand as well. Well, a quality goal, St. John's coming right out just a couple of minutes in. Down now only 8-6, 23-26 to go. Very important point that Mike made earlier where you can't count St. John's out, and that's just a sign that they plan to fight this one. And, and when you're down by two early in the second half, you're in it. So that shot was by number eight, Sloan Davidson. Talking about all the field hockey players here. Uh, Sloan Davidson's committed to play field hockey at UVA. Fans here in the stadium at Barnhart Stadium trying to get uh, some energy to these St. John's players here. They are really excited. So let's see. It looks like their position fairly neutral on the draw. Player up, a player back. They got the ball in the air. 
Okay, so the Kincaid player, or the Hockaday player is held. Giving the ball to Hockaday. Number 11, Landry Grover, University of Denver commit. Landry will take it herself, try to work it up the field. Defender's trying to prevent that. She works towards the sideline. It gets precarious over there. Hockaday works it into the attack zone. They will bring it back to X, dead center X. There goes the footwork. And they bring it back to the side, bring it back up top, high off the 12. Looks like they'll work some form of settled offense, though they're always in motion, you'll notice. Just because it's settled doesn't mean they're going to stand still. A lot of green there. They're all positioning themselves bottom of the field. Powerful shot there, wide to the left. Number six, May Flanagan. Another freshman for Hockaday. Yeah, she got good power on the shot, just a little too wide to the left, lower left, and Hockaday brings it back in from X. There's the footwork, usually means she's going to goal. More footwork, spins the stick, usually means she's going to goal, and she is, what a fake, what a goal. Number nine again, Sunny Wang. Nine, six, Hockaday back up by three, 21, 33 to go. Hockaday answers. So St. John showed some energy. They came back. Uh, both teams with a lot of skilled players and Hockaday gets that one to go back up by three. Hockaday getting a lot of production today out of their freshmen. Uh, interesting. I wonder if some of that's because uh, St. John is really working on taking number 15, Minjay Kwan, out of the game. Face guarding her the entire game here. Yep, and that might have been why they called the timeout. I think you mentioned that to me at halftime, Mike, with they wanted to run a play, they wanted to run it to her, and they had to design a play to get it specifically to her, knowing she'd be face guarded, and they did. So what we, what we saw is they line up for the draw, just back to the Hockaday defense, the zone backer. It's basically a zone, but you pressure the point on the ball. Um, so there's always going to be a player open somewhere, but if you, if you run the zone back of the right way, it's very hard to beat. There are, there are plays to beat it, but it's not an easy thing to do unless you practiced it. Both teams lining up here, only three uh, attack players, uh, five defenders on both sides in case they lose the draw. Yeah, so that's that's within the rules of girls lacrosse where you can you can stack your attack zone or your defensive zone. The really the only rule you have to follow is you're only allowed three players in the mid zone on the draw circle. Draw again, Minjay takes it to himself. Great. She got hit on that uh, there in the side. Yep, so she will go back and, and switch the stick. So we've seen St. John's is now able to get the ball in the air, which is what we thought would help them. It seems that Hockaday still is maintaining a lot of possession on the draw. Rolls, rolls the crease, carries it through, smart play. She didn't have a lot of power to put into that shot. She carried it through, no need to force it, but they come right back rolling the crease. Well defended by number 14, Ellie Monday. Hit the pipe, number nine, Susie Wang. Sunny Wang. Great shot there, just off the post. They work it back to the goalie. So they've answered our questions. A Hockaday is, is not going to slow things down. They're gonna keep going to goal and play as hard as they can. So on the clear, St. John's with the redirect back to the goalie. They will put someone on the goalie. Oh, Minjay Kwan, great takeaway on the pass. start on number 15 Minjay oh! Kwan. There is a whistle inside the critical scoring area. It's not a self-start inside the critical scoring area. You have to wait for the whistle. Yeah, so that's a good call. It's an unfortunate call. It's it's the call you don't like to see, but it is the rule. He made the right call. St. John's ball. Yeah. 
St. John's bringing the ball back up the field, down by three, 19.50 to go in the second. They're going to work the ball around the perimeter, bring it back up top, high 12. Still a lot of time left in this game, Mike. I think Kincaid can afford to be, be patient here, play their game. Yep, a little bit of a weave there, but not forced positioning players. Looks like they're working something here to position players as they want. And out of this, usually a play develops and it breaks on a certain signal. There's the Hockaday aggressive defense. There is the signal. We have a pick. Hockaday doing well defending the ball carrier. Good job, that was great lacrosse all the way around. Great job by St. John's, but the Hockaday defender stepping into the last second to get a stick on the shooter stick sends it off the end line. St. John's keeps possession. Go defense! Slow work around the top of the perimeter, high 12. Looks like they're going to start working the weave. There they go. Moving their players around. Moving the chess pieces to get the positioning they want. There go two defenders on the ball. There it is. Skip pass. A lot of their offenses for St. John's has come from number nine, Alexa Christensen. Maybe trying to work the ball to her. Looking at feed from X. Looks like an open stick check. Of a Working the ball back to X, up to the top, up to the side. Breaks free. Looks like Break she wants good. to go to goal. They close quickly. That's something that you'll notice when you've coached, and I know both of us, Mike, have coached at the younger ages. As you get up into high school and you watch Division One, how fast defenders close inside the eight. That looked open, and all of a sudden it wasn't. Free position shot here for St. John's. Go, go, team! Nice. Six balls checked out her six. Pretty clear by the goalie. A quick release gets the ball upfield, and St. John's is in the, in the attack zone within seconds of the goalie save. Working some sort of settled offense, no rush. Keep the ball wide, don't force it in. You're gonna work the ball up top to the high 12. Substitution by Hockaday on the fly. Bringing in number seven, Lily Gum, another freshman. So this is an interesting thing you see in lacrosse where they bring the, the player goes over to talk to the coach because the coach has free reign, free run up and down that one sideline. Settled offense again. Not showing any urgency here. 16-22 left to go. St. John's trailing 6-9. to nine. With the ball to X. Still no rush. Here's Sunny Wang. She just rolled the free several times here. Let's see if she goes this time. She wants to. Is that a free position in there? That's a free position. Uh, stick in the sphere. So you saw the referee, Scott Elmore, wave the yellow flag. If the player shoots, then it, it follows on from the shot. If not, the player takes it out, then you get a free position from the eight. Number eight, Taylor Hua. Bit of a skip pass there. Look at that. Yeah. Number 26, Riley DeMonte. A sophomore. Yeah, that was, that was so impressive. I, I couldn't follow it, and I'm up in the booth watching this. The way they did the skip pass and then the player down lower close to the goal broke wide open. That's tough to defend. That brings us to 10-6, 15-27 to go. Hockaday Daisies lead SPC Championship in Houston, Texas. So Mike, if you could explain the critical scoring area 
where, where the whistle blow is different. What defines the critical scoring area in girls lacrosse? So girls lacrosse, critical scoring area is basically everything within the 12-meter uh, arc. You have the 12-meter arc and the 8-meter fan. Basically, everything within the 12-meter uh, arc, which is the semicircle in front of uh, the goal, that's the uh, critical scoring area. That's where uh, most of the goals, or excuse me, most of the penalties result in a free position uh, shot at that point. Yeah, so, and when you're in there, it's not a free start when there's a penalty, and that's what, that, that's what happened last time when the Hockaday got called for a false start. Yeah, NJ Kwan with the uh, draw control again for Hockaday. So she still has her draw Pushed stick. In the back. She has not switched her. I, she's been hitting the hand a few times, it seems. Is that an offsides? They're going to call and count. I, Molly Ford does not like the call. I, I did my own count. I didn't see it. I didn't see the offsides. Yeah, they're, they're, Molly Ford is still counting. Everybody's moved. They can't do anything at this point. Got to give the ball to St. John's. So the offsides in girls lacrosse, you're only allowed so many players inside your attack zone on offense. You're allowed seven. And when you have more than that, then you are offsides and the other team gets the ball. Good speed by Hockaday defense. Great pass there, working the ball up the field by St. John's into the attack zone. Nice, man. Great defense by Hockaday. Brown ball picked up by number uh, six, May Flanagan. And there's the cannon. She's got a rocket for a shot, overthrowing her players. St. John's, a little bit of a scramble. St. John's does get the ball back. Check across the body. Go defense! So Counting off the sides again. Counting players. I see Hockaday with have four. Yeah. Unless we have too many players on the field, I got four for each team back. Hockaday has too many players on the field. On the field. That was a good catch. Yeah, offsides is a lot more, occurs a lot more. I rarely see too many players on the field. Especially at this level of play. That's a mental error I hate to see. You don't see that very often at this level of play. St. John's Mavericks will work the ball, take it to X. Hockaday is going to stay aggressive. And I did talk to some of the parents at halftime, and they did say that that's their general style of play. Whether you want to call it generally aggressive or the backer zone defense, that they do not let you sit there and set up plays. They'd rather come after you. Missed pass. Mavericks keep the ball. Driving to goal, back to X. They will work the perimeter, 13.49 to go. Hockaday Daisy's up by four. Back at X, Mavericks have the ball. St. John's working the ball. Hockaday still aggressive defense, feed inside the eight. That's a great shot that just didn't make its mark. Great shot by St. John's, and they keep the ball on the out of bounds. Working the ball up top. She's going to drive. St. John's drives to goal. Top pipe. Number nine, Alexa Christensen again. That was a great shot. She tried to go top shelf. Just off the pipe, straight down. And the clear looks like they might, yep, keep possession here. Another check cross body, self start. She's going to go to goal. Got to call that one. Push in the back, St. John's. So back to the critical scoring area that Mike explained earlier. So that was example of not critical scoring area and the free start. They called the penalty, blew the whistle, girl played on. With possession, went to goal. That's where the penalty occurred. She will get the free position from the eight. Number six, May Flanagan taking the uh, free possession. Off the pipe. Off the pipe. We've seen a few of those shots again. She went for the low side. Bottom shelf. 
off the pipe. St. John's drives up the field, bottom of your screen. Great back catch there. Still bringing the ball up into the attack zone. She wants to drive to goal. She has the space. Yeah. Great defense. Number 11 for Hockaday. Landry Grover. St. John's keeps possession, feeds it inside the eight. Looks like a yellow card. Check to the check to the sphere. Yeah, stick to the head. Got to call that one. Mandatory yellow card in uh, girls lacrosse. Number 11, Landry Grover served two minutes for a stick uh, to the head. Mike, this is actually our first yellow card of the game. Yeah. The referees have uh, done a good job. They've kept control of the game, uh, but they've also let them play. Yeah, that's important at this level to let them play, but keep it under control. Great stick work, but a better, better save there. Not much you can do. They work it back to the goalie. This is fun to watch. Reminds me of Rachel Hall running around the field. Rachel Hall, Boston, uh, is it Boston College? Or Boston, Boston College. Or? Boston College uh, yeah. goalie out of Sci Fair here in the Houston area. Yep, national champion, Rachel Hall. Yeah, that's an example there. They weren't going to call that. A little bit of a heavy push could have been called. They let it go. They're going to let them play on. Hockaday bringing the ball down to the attack side of the field. Number 15, Min Jake One has the ball. Ten fifty-two to go. Down by four. St. John's playing a little bit of a passive defense. You're gonna, now they're going to get aggressive. See that they're going to play. So they're playing. Looks like a, a almost a zone backer of their own because they are man up. So the strategy by Hockaday would be to kill the penalty. Yeah, St. John's has to have two players on the ball here with you know since they are man up. Yeah, they, they yeah, they need to attack this maybe a little more. But let's give them time. Hockaday here just happy to try to kill the penalty. Ow. Number six, May Flanagan for Hockaday has the ball. Stick in the sphere. Hockaday still looking to kill the penalty. Is that the player coming on for even? That's the player coming on. We're now even. Back to full 12 on 12 lacrosse. Hockaday's May Flanagan with the ball. Driving Great to the goal. Nice. Yeah. We have a whistle, shooting space prior to the shot. May Flanagan, number six for Hockaday, will get the free position shot. That was very impressive. The power that she put into that shot, power and placement was nice. Um, the call was accurate though. There was a, a, a defender that was in the way, uh, so they're required to call that. It's not. It's not his choice to call it. He sees that he calls the defender in the shooting space free position. Another good save. I think the St. John's goalie is doing a great job of, of preventing Hockaday from, from starting to run away with this. It's a four goal differential now, but the St. John's goalie has played a large role in keeping him in this one. Referees say that number six May Flanagan was pushed during her shot there. They're going to let her try it again. And they call the goal. Number six, May Flanagan. So if you watch the stick work on these free positions, where you really want to be shooting from is directly over your head. Because if you're shooting from your right or your left, the girls that are coming in from the eighth, the defenders are going to get a stick on your stick. But if you can somehow position the stick directly over your head and get some power on it, it's very hard to stop. That goal gives Hockaday a five-point advantage. Hockaday 11, St. John 6, 8.33 left to go in the second half here at Siegel Field at Kincaid. And next week uh, is the state championship. As mentioned, this is the SPC championship, the Southern Preparatory Conference championship. Next weekend is the state championship final four. First round of that, Hockaday plays Flower Mound, St. John's plays Westlake. Let's go, Mandy! Let's go, Hockaday! Come 
Jay. NJ Kwan taking the draw again for Hockaday. Draws it to herself, wins the draw. Quick release. She gets the draw, quick release, forces the ball upfield. Great job by Hockaday getting the ball upfield quickly. You can see up at the top of the eight there, Hockaday running some sort of pick and roll. Some, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Great ball. Low roller. Great ball. Draw all the defenders out of the eight meter. Gives plenty of room for number eight. Excuse me, number nine, Suni Wang, to draw, drive, and score. Brings score to 12 for Hockaday, 6 for St. John's. 8.08 left to go in the second half. So for those not familiar, one, once you're inside that 8, the 8 meter arc, which you can see highlighted in blue, once you're inside that, um, you ha the if you're a defender, you're only allowed in there if you're defending somebody. You can't sit back inside the 8 unless you're defending somebody within a stick length. And if you do, it's a, you get called for a penalty, a three second penalty, and you have to you have to then, they blow the whistle, you bring yourself outside the 12 and they get to run the play. So what, what Mike was pointing out is they were stacking, Hockaday stacking their players up high on the eight, forcing the defenders to stay high with them, leaving a one-on-one -on -one for the girl to cut to goal. And we've seen that a few times from them, very successful so far. Mike, I'm not a big fan of uh, coaches taking their foot off the gas. Six-point differential here, eight minutes left. Do you think Hockaday takes her foot off the gas, or do they continue to go full throttle here? I I've seen nothing from Hockaday that suggests that they have that in their blood. Um, they play the aggressive defense when they move the ball up the field. Uh, they get it up there quickly. So I, I think, you know, you and I having coached many times before, you still play full speed, but you maybe not, you don't force the shot. You maybe pull them back a little bit. You don't need goals. You need the game to end. So she could, she could very easily tell them to keep forcing the ball in there and scoring goal. They've been very successful. Or you maybe pull them back just one notch and say only if you have an easy goal, take it. If not, work it around. Hockaday's Molly Ford Hutchinson, I'm sure, telling her players to be very intentional with their play here. We don't need uh, errant passes that are easily picked off or dropped. Let's make sure we have good, clean, crisp passes here. Keep the ball in uh, possession. Keep the ball away from St. John's. You can't uh, score if you don't have the ball. What do you think uh, St. John's coach is telling her players right now? Uh, that we're still in this, and they are. Um, and it, it's an uphill battle. It, let's, let's not make a mistake here. It's, they're down six with eight minutes to go, and Hockaday is a good team. Uh, but you, you have to make sure your team knows you're still in this, but you have to play smart lacrosse, as you just mentioned. Um, smart passes and, and stay aggressive. And if you don't win, you don't win. And if, if today Hockaday is the better team, then, then maybe they are. But that doesn't change how you play when you close this out. And you, you fight this one down the last goal. And you, you keep yourselves in this as long as you can. And I think we've seen the St. John's goalie do a good job of that. And if they just score a few goals, maybe they're back in this. One of the great things about lacrosse is just how fast the game is. Fastest game on uh, turf, fastest game on two feet. Uh, eight minutes is still a lot of time left to go here in uh, this game. We wouldn't count St. John's out just yet, but uh, they definitely need to play with some purpose here as we uh, get ready to resume play here. Referee's calling the players back to the field. Yeah, if you string together the St. John's plays where they've scored, if they can just string some of those together, um, then, then certainly they can start narrowing this gap. Um, but if they score and then Hockaday might get a goal, if they're trading goals here, it might be a little late in the day for that. So let's see if St. John's can string together the great plays that they've done so far when they've been able to score goals. St. John's taking the field first. Molly Ford still talking to her players over there. Yeah, and then from, from the sidelines on Hockaday, you know, that gets into the speech. You don't, you don't let the other team back in this game. Uh, sometimes teams can get complacent and they can start talking about the weekend or, or other topics on the sidelines or the bus ride home and not focus on the game. The, the primary goal for Hockaday coaching right now is to keep their players in this game until it's over. St. John sends number 31, Lexi Lukens, to the draw circle. Facing off against number 15, Ninja Kwan from Hockaday. So after the timeout, 8.08 left. Hockaday Daisies 12, St. John's Mavericks 6. Scott Elmore sets the draw. 
she has a that's the best part of the draw in addition to her winning it how she has that quick release to get the ball upfield very impressive and she switches sticks and heads into the attack zone Hockaday has the ball at X flip pass at X setting up a play here uh, Hockaday is going to take a move around the perimeter here not playing very quick. They may work and just try to be very purposeful here. Try to take some time off this clock. Yep. St. John's going to have to come out and pressure the ball. Mm. Working it from X. Here's a crease roll. She's going to go low. Left-handed shot, so she's made the few shots before right-handed. She comes in left-handed there. Very impressive. Low roller, puts them up by seven. Number nine, Sunny Wang. She's been one of the leading scorers here for Hockaday today, and she's only a freshman. Yes, Sunny! So that might answer the question, maybe a little bit of both. Maybe just take the time and position, get into a settled offense, but it doesn't seem by any means that Hockaday plans to slow things down. When they have a shot to goal, it seems like they're currently going to take that. Hockaday hurrying back to the draw circle here. They're ready to play again. St. John's taking their time, making sure that they uh, communicate on defense. Everybody knows uh, what the calls are. So we have seen the draw we have seen St. John's get get a little bit more uh, favorable situations popping the ball up but Hockaday seems to always be on the on the bottom side of catching that that ball uh, they cured the problem in the first half Hockaday still maintains the draw possession almost every time yeah St. John's done a good job getting the ball up in the air making a 50-50 ball Hockaday still winning most of those 50-50 balls but at least they're not drawing to themselves anymore she did there. Number 15, Minjay Kwan draws to herself. Hockaday wins the draw. She's being pressured, still has her draw stick. Okay, so St. John's will be aggressive. They're going to come right on him. Looks like no call. Maybe a stick to the face. No call. Come on, ref, make a call. So break to goal. She has the assist open to left. Shot by number 26, Riley DeMonte for Hockaday. That was a powerful shot. She didn't get great placement on it. Goalie made the save. She put a lot of power into that. Number 9, Alexa Christensen for St. John's has the ball. She's going to take it coast to coast. to Shoot. Possibly a little bit of frustration there, Mike. She probably should have taken a couple more steps there. I, I would say so, too. I think the Hockaday goalie is a little too quick for a shot. When you're, you know, out closer to the eight, maybe get that closer in to try to plant it in the net. Check across the body. Yeah, so you can see what you pointed out earlier. They're just face guarding. Um, at, the, at the bottom of our screen here. They're just going to assign a player to cover uh, number 16, is that? 15. 15, yeah. Minjay. Minjay, who's been dominating this game. So they're going to try to take her out, which is a, it's a viable strategy. Your problem is when there's another goal on the, on the spin. Is that number 8, Taylor Hua? Looks like it. Great goal, answers the question again that Hockaday does not plan to turn this down very much at all. With that goal, Hockaday now has 14, St. John 6, 521 to left to go in the second half here at Siegel Field at Kincaid. Hockaday not taking their foot off the gas at this point, though they are being very intentional, really spreading them out on uh, defense there. It's really opening up some uh, lanes for them to drive in. Yeah, and you can see as we, as we were discussing when they scored that goal with Minjay uh, being face guarded so you, if you take away their one of their top players or the top player um, obviously Hockaday has the depth so you still have another six players to defend and and sometimes that works if teams are, are, are stuck with just one player at the top position but Hockaday, Hockaday has a lot of depth Let's 
Number 31, Lexi Lukens taking the draw for St. John's against number 15, Minjay Kwan for your Hockaday. Referee sets the ball. Minjay draws to herself again. St. John's fighting for it. St. John's actually wins the draw. Great hustle by St. John's. Boxing out, forcing the ball, moving it closer, taking it all the way upfield fast. So they were going to work it down to X. Five minutes to go here, down by eight. St. John's working from X. And as you can see, Hockaday is going to cover them. Hockaday is going to play them all the way up to the restraining line. Ball down. St. John's keeps possession. Here comes Hockaday again. They, if you get the ball, they're going to charge you. And there's the zone backer defense that they run. Errant pass by St. John's. Rolls out of bounds. Hockaday ball. Yes, one of the pitfalls if you pass to X uh, and you miss it, it's no longer your ball. So crease violation on St. John. St. John. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hockaday goalie tried to roll the ball into the crease, which is allowed in girls lacrosse. She actually rolled it through the crease, but St. John's player went into the crease trying to uh, get the ball. Good job working the ball up the field so far. Done, they've done a good job on the clear. I think uh, I think both teams have. Hockaday moves that ball up quickly the way they position their players. They'll bring the ball back around to X. Three minutes, 44 seconds to go. Great save by St. John's goalie. Shot by number two, Grace Hubberman. Yeah, she had some, uh, great moves in there. One of the things is, is, she, is she was fading away from the goal on the shot. She lost a little bit of power. So that's going to be tough to put past the St. John's goalie when you, when you don't have full power. St. John's goalie bringing the ball up the field. Uh, pass a little short. Goalie is out of barrel. Hockaday ball. Hockaday ball, three minutes to go. Sonny Wang being guarded at X. Another goal, same one we saw, I think maybe last play. She rolls the crease, comes in left-handed with the low shot. That was even something of a hook shot. She had to kind of reach further and snap that one back towards the goal on the low side. Outstanding goal, and with 2.31 left, Daisy's by 7, 15 to 6. Yeah, Hockaday's not satisfied here. It's not enough. They're continuing to uh, score here. Very aggressive, very fast style of play. You gotta love it. This is great girls lacrosse. Yep, we've we've seen great lacrosse many times. I've mentioned when you watch the collegiate level on the Division One, uh, you just see things that they do differently at that level, and we've seen a lot of that today. Uh, Hockaday's exhibited a lot of it. So has St. John's early early with the weave that we saw. St. John's um, both teams have shown that, um, and as we know, these are some of the top programs in the state, and that's why you will see them next weekend in Austin for the state final four for the Texas Division I level. St. John's played very well today. They should actually be very proud of the way they've played. Just not good enough today for uh, Hockaday. Hockaday is the better team today. Very aggressive style of play from Hockaday. Another draw control for Hockaday. Yeah, I, I don't know if we sum up today that it's been all draw control, but that definitely plays a role. It might, you said it earlier, it's, it's obvious, but it needs to be reiterated. If you don't have the ball, uh, you can't score. And the team with the ball is going to score more. That's what we've seen today. I, I think there's two things here. It's possession for uh, Hockaday with all the draw controls. And then just how aggressive this Hockaday defense has been in defending uh, against St. John's. Really forcing St. John's into some quick plays, maybe some uh, passes that, uh, in hindsight, they wish they hadn't made. But, uh, you know, you know, 
really Hockaday playing very aggressive here. Yeah, and we saw that early with some interceptions by the Hockaday defense where, where St. John's, um, they thought somebody was open and all of a sudden there's a defender there. So now we have a, a penalty inside the eight, free position, number two from Hockaday. Uh, she's gonna come in and she gets pushed and scores. That's determination. That's when you really wanna score. You take a push with the stick, you're on the turf, but you get the goal. And that puts Hockaday up 16-6 with a minute 33 to go. Uh, they keep answering the question we asked, are they gonna take their foot off the gas? The answer is they're not going to. I think there's, there's a part of a mindset where you, you want your team to always be aggressive. And we're not we're talking about running up a score as in a game like this. That's not what's going on as much as just playing aggressive at all times. If you go back to maybe the maybe the Steve Spurrier era, or uh, other sports where some coaches just had that mindset, they're they're never going to slow down. And Hockaday is able to score another goal with the ten point advantage. Now uh, the clock will run until we uh, reach the end of uh, play. St. John's wins the uh, draw control here. Very aggressively defended. Yep. St. John's with the ball at X, but clearly, 33 seconds left. Try to roll the crease. They should try to get one more. Let's see if they can get one more shot off 27 seconds. She's close in. They close quickly. I mentioned that earlier. At the higher levels of the cross, those openings aren't there for long. 14 seconds. See if they can get something going here. Definite sense of urgency from St. John's. Oh, good check. And there it is. Game ends. Zeroes on the scoreboard for time. But for the points, Kincaid, I'm sorry, at Kincaid Field, Hockaday Daisy 16, St. John's Maverick 6. A great effort by both teams. At the end of the day, the things we discussed, mostly the draw control and the aggressiveness. It really kept Hockaday in a favorable position all day, and that showed up on the scoreboard. And that concludes Vibe's coverage of the SPC Girls Lacrosse Championship game. Congratulations to your Hockaday Daisies the 2022 SPC Girls Lacrosse Champions.